what I've learned selling covered calls for the last six plus months. Now, that's a long, long shot away from what I'm used to, from penny stocks, from trading strategies, from all this different stuff that I have certainly had my hands deep, deep into, actually probably up to my elbows, if not even my shoulders, deep in the mud of all these other different things. But I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, and my long-term investing strategy is pretty much set in stone as of right now, and I don't see this changing anytime soon. And I want to dive into that and why covered calls are a huge part of that with three of the biggest things or the biggest takeaways, the biggest things I have learned over these past six plus months. It's been more than that, but I would say more consistently, this strategy has been kind of nailed in over the last six plus months, really since the beginning of this year in early 2023. Now, I do want to take it back to back when I originally got into the markets and interested in investing, it was my dad putting on CNBC on days he was home from work, just so, you know, I was getting into it. I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. And eventually I opened up my own brokerage account, lost a ton of money, lost uh, all my savings at the time, which was only a couple thousand dollars. But hey, as a college student who was already going into debt, um, yeah, that sucked. Um, so I only made my net worth more and more negative at the time. That said, though, I got into penny stocks and I was like, yo, penny stocks, why would you long term invest when you can get 100% overnight? Like, why would it matter? Now, of course, this actually, not even of course, this actually comes before when you think it's coming from. This is before 2020. This is not the COVID market. This is actually 2019. This is how I was thinking. Okay. When I got in, I got into penny stocks in 2019. Okay. Before everything happened. Okay. Then obviously that was exaggerated with the pandemic and whatnot. But, but that said, I was like, why would you ever long term invest? I didn't know anything about market cycles. I took an account from essentially like 300 bucks to legitimately $55,000 over the course of the next year and a half. And then I proceeded to lose a large amount of that money uh, over the next two years. So it was a slow and painful death. That has gotten me to where I am today. Number one, the number one takeaway of covered calls. You're going to win more. You're going to win more. And if you have anything or any experience in trading the market, whether that's the S&P, whether that's individual stocks, Forex, crypto, I don't know. And you, have, and you actually know what tr real trading is, not COVID getting lucky market type stuff. You'll understand or you'll know that you're not going to be 90% right. 95%. No, no, you're not. Uh, you're going to be more like 50% right. Some maybe a little bit more, some maybe even less. And you can still be green. You still could be profitable. But you got to have a risk management strategy in place for when you're wrong. Whereas selling covered calls, you're going to be right a lot more. Why? If you sell out of the money covered calls, the chances of those expiring in the money are a lot lower than in the money covered or than in the money calls or at the money calls. Why is that? Well, the stock has to go up and it has to go up by a amount of your choosing at the covered call strike price to then be in the money and expire with value. If not, it's going to expire with nothing to these guys, nothing is zero, zero next to its name. So you'll find, and when you sell covered calls, by the way, I want to quickly cover this and I can totally cover it in the future, or you can just watch a video, look it up to get a better understanding. If you're confused. When I sell a covered call, I own the underlying stock, 100 shares at least to sell one. Because when I buy a call, I'm buying the right to buy 100 shares at the strike price. That's what I'm playing off the premium value of that. Now, when I sell a covered call and that call expires worthless out of the money, what I sold it for is what I keep. And whoever bought it held it to zero and they lost all their money. They lost their money in the, in the position. That in a nutshell is why selling covered calls out of the money covered calls specifically is or has a substantially higher win rate than even flipping a coin and then simply betting on direction of stock because the stock has to move up and it has to move up by the expiration date to whatever price that point is. So you're going to win more now. Just because you win more doesn't mean you're going to make more money. But let me explain. Number two, five to 10 bucks 
can add up. And so for those of you with smaller accounts, for those of you with a couple thousand dollars to invest, for you, those of you even with 10, $20,000 to invest, five to 10 bucks sounds like nothing. You're like, oh, fuck, dude, this guy, turn the video off, shut it off, call it a day, I'm done. This is so stupid, I'm out of here. I'm gonna go watch the freaking next stock to buy video. <laughs> go ahead, go do it. And maybe you'll make money, I don't know. But the five to 10 bucks that you can sell far out the money covered calls that have a low chance of expiring in the money are really where you're gonna see the most consistency in your cash flow. Now, of course, on higher price stocks, those can be up, those will go up. On lower price stocks, I'm talking for people who are buying stocks and buying 100 shares of stocks that are sub $10, even sub 20 bucks, you know, you're not gonna be able to go out and sell covered calls for a dollar and get paid 100 bucks a week. It's not gonna happen. You could, but most likely that's gonna be an in the money position or at the money, and then you're gonna get taken out way faster, and then it's like, okay, well, now what's the point of doing this? But those five to 10 bucks can add up. For example, people talk about, as I pull up Verizon stock, just as an example today, people talk about, and I've got some lines on here, because this video actually has taken me uh, a second attempt, because the camera wasn't recording. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it, gotta love it, ladies and gentlemen, gotta love it. Um, okay, so Verizon stock currently is paying a dividend of 7.61%. That could change, but let's just call it around there. Actually, hey, let's call Verizon an 8% per year payer. You invest in Verizon, you're going to get your 8% per year, kind of like the S&P 500, okay, on average. Now, that's cool and that's great to know. Okay, I'm gonna make on average 8% per year over the course of my lifetime. That's cool if I just do the math of, okay, invest this much now, invest more and more, compound interest. Oh, what's that gonna mean? I'm gonna have X by the X. Cool, great. If it all works out that way, cool. Covered calls could get you there faster. Could, I say. Because if I was to sell one covered call a month on Verizon, Okay, let's go to Verizon. BZ, baby. If I pull up Verizon here on Robinhood and I go to the option chain, okay? And I go to, let's just go out to like one month from now, which is like end of the month. Let's just call it end of the month, end of September. And I was to try to see if I can sell a 36 for 12 cents. Let's just call it 10 bucks or 10 cents to make it easy, okay? And I sell one covered call per month and get paid 10 cents per month which 36 on Verizon would put you up here. Could totally get there. That's a pretty big move given Verizon's recent downtrend and it's not super volatile. So let's say I sell that, expires worth as I get paid 10 bucks. 10 bucks, my friends, 10 bucks times 12 months a year that I can do this is 120 bucks. Cool, sounds like 100 bucks. Great, that's over the course of a year. Maybe that's not so great. Well, to get 100 shares of Verizon to be able to sell a covered call, I have to invest $3,423, okay? $3,423, why? Because the price is 34.23 times it by 100, boom. Now, just to get a sense, right? A 1% return would mean I make $34.23. So I'm actually doing 120 bucks. 120 divided by 34 or whatever the number was, 34.20 something, is around 3.5. So I'm going to be able to achieve a couple percent per year on my on my position, on my asset, on my 100 shares of Verizon. I can get an extra couple percent per year by selling out of the money covered calls once a month. Once a month. Is that life-changing stuff? Probably not. You're probably not walking away and going, holy shit, I've got the key to being financially free next week. No, no, but, but hear me out. Do this for a year, do it for two, do it for five, do it for the rest of your life. I don't care. Or apply these principles and you can see that adding an extra 2% per year to my portfolio's yield when an on average, if I was just in the s and I'm going to get eight-ish. If I can get that to 10 on average, safely, not taking massive risks, the compound effect starts to really take hold. So you kind of see now the gears start to turn. This is pretty cool from a long-term investing perspective. Now, now here come people saying, that, oh, no, no, no. That's terrible because you're going to sell yourself short. 
let's cover that. Here's the downside. If I was to do this on a stock like ARK and say, I want to buy ARK, I want to get exposure to growth stocks. I actually recently did do this. Um, but I want to do this and I want to sell covered calls. ARK could be volatile. ARK could do this, make big moves, and I could sell. Let's say the day I was right here, we were right here. And I sold a covered call up around 48 bucks for the next week on ARK. And ARK next week is at 50. Well, I'm going to have my covered call expire with value. If I do nothing, I still get paid. But now I have to sell my ARK at the strike price of 48 bucks. So I'm going to miss out on my 100 shares of an extra $2 of appreciation, which means I'm missing out on $200 of upside. Now, maybe I sold a covered call for 10 cents and I'm like, oh shit. You know, that's 10 bucks. I'm missing out on $190 of upside. So that's the downside to the covered calls. And I will tell you that covered calls are not the best idea to do or to sell on your most coveted growth stock of choice. If you have like, I don't know, let's say you're, you know, you love Palantir. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Palantir is good. Maybe it's not. I have no idea. Let's say you love Palantir and you want to hold Palantir and you want to sell covered calls and just grow for the forever. But Palantir does this right? Palantir does this. You're going to miss out. There's no doubt in my mind you're going to miss out somehow and in a pretty substantial way. It's not always the best approach. So if you are going to sell covered calls on your favorite growth stock, I would encourage you, you do that if the stock is A, overbought in your opinion, which again, this starts to get subjective. So it's not very easy to play. It's either overbought, it's up a ton, or it's overvalued in your opinion. If one of those or three of those things are all lining up, sell a covered call out the money. And if it gets there, it gets there and you get taken out and you're happy to get taken out and then you'll buy, you'll look to buy it back later on, which you could do. Uh, no guarantees you'll get it cheaper, right? Or you're happy with the gains and you want to just lock it in and sell your shares at whatever strike price you sell a covered call out. And if it gets there and it pushes up above that level by the expiration, you take it off and that is what it is. But it's not the best long-term strategy. So on... Other ETFs like SPY, QQQ, or there are other cheaper versions of those ETFs that maybe you can sell covered calls on that you can go way out the money and get paid that 10, 20, 30 bucks, X, X number of dollars, add it up over the course of a month, a year, and it starts to add an extra couple percent potentially to your investing portfolio. Or if you have individual stocks, same thing. Sell some far out the money covered calls. Sometimes I'll tell you this, I will sit there and I will just throw out some way out the money covered calls and set my sells for five cents on stocks that I'm 100% not willing to give up and I want to hold them for you know a long time. I'll sell some way out there and sometimes people hit, people hit them. I just throw a line out in the ocean, deep out in the ocean and someone bites and I get paid five bucks. Is five bucks a lot of money? No, but if you do that over the course of a month, a year, a decade, it adds up. It only adds to your compound effect and it's pretty safe. It's not like you're playing a super low risk strategy that's making you either a ton of money or you're losing it all, right? It's going to make you a little bit of money, very little bit of money, but done over the course of a year can add up and has a much higher win rate than buying and speculating on price. So that would be my caution to the growth stocks and the covered calls. But with that said, I hope this gives you guys a really good understanding of covered calls, why I'm not going back and why it's the way, in my opinion, for a long-term portfolio. To be essentially cash flowing you, built upon, and the foundation, I think, of someone who knows just a little bit more than the average investor, the average passive investor who puts their money with someone else to manage it for them and pays a fee and gets their 8% per year. Maybe there's a fee, maybe it's 7% per year safely or you know via someone's oversight or take it into your own hands, save yourself the fee and maybe get yourself close to the 10% on average. Just again, now that's just saying we're playing safe stocks. 10% on average year after year after year plus a cash flow could be good for other things too. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. With that said, I'll leave any links, resources down below, anything you want to check out, trading journals, trading view, indicators, all that great stuff 
in the video description box if you want to check it out. Make sure you are subscribed. Hit that thumbs up if this video is helpful in any way and share the love for these covered calls. I think there's a lot to be learned from them. I think there's a lot of value here. Small, but it adds up. Those pennies, those pennies stack up. And we talk about that pretty much every week on our live streams. Peace out.